Okay folks, so this is an update video on my previous ones where we've messed around with the EGR exhaust gas recirculation valve, disconnecting that. Sorry about the lighting, it's really shitty with the sun. And the throttle plate, deleting or removing the thr throttle plate butterfly. Now, um, just a, a quick recap. So I've owned this vehicle for 10 years and for the last 10 years I've had the EGR exhaust gas recirculation valve disconnected as in the pipe's just been pulled off and blocked and it's run perfectly fine and recently what I did was remove the throttle plate butterfly in here so have I noticed a difference? Absolutely nothing. Haven't noticed any difference apart from one thing. When you go to turn off the engine the engine will give a good shake just as it shuts down and the reason it does that is because just before the engine on these shuts down what it does is it closes the butterfly here and creates a vacuum in the cylinders which means there's no compression and the engine shuts down nice and smoothly. Um, have I noticed any fuel economy differences? No, nothing. Have I noticed any more or, more or less engine power? horsepower. No, haven't noticed anything. So it's debatable as to removing the butterfly, is there any benefit to it at all? So what I'll do is I'll go start this up and I'll shut it down and I'll show you just how much the engine does shake. So the engine's idling away, I'll turn it off and you might be able to pick up the amount of shake we have now. So that's a lot more than what we had before. A little bit annoying, but doesn't really worry me. Does no damage. One other thing I've noticed is at idle, it's also a lot more noisier through the uh, intake manifold on the snorkel up here because we haven't got the throttle plate, plate butterfly uh, shut, partially suppressing the noise bounce back through here. Also another observation is we're looking at the gear lever here and what we have on here is a switch which turns on the exhaust brake or the cold or the uh, quick warm up um, butterfly in the exhaust pipe which is basically exhaust brake but I can bypass this by turning it on like that and the difference is it's a lot more noisier when I engage the exhaust brake going down the road and that noise is all bouncing out the uh, intake manifold because um, under deacceleration the butterfly throttle plate shuts so that was keeping things a lot quieter so it's a bit more noisier I mean, it's all right sounds a bit more cool really so you're looking at the back end of the snorkel um, or the front side of the snorkel or the air goes in so if you turn on the exhaust brake you'll see what I mean just sounds a little bit more chunkier and if you turn it off and on so that's another observation so apart from those few observations which I've just talk about, talked about there's no real difference at all um, maybe maybe and I can't prove it because I don't have an exhaust gas analyzer on this or anything it might not run as rich possibly but apart from that, I can't prove or disprove that theory. So anyway, that's an update video on this old girl. Thanks for watching. See ya. Haha, -ha, got your fizzing at the bunghole now, haven't I? Exhaust brake. You want one. You want to know how to do it. Well, I don't have time to explain. It's a little bit complicated, but I'll give you the brief rundown here now without all the technical and the wiring and all the guff on how to do it. So... Two things, if you've got a manual, this is a lot easier to do because you just go and fit yourself a switch that shuts the exhaust brake valve on the down pot dump pipe on the exhaust. But if you've got a auto, what you need to do is fit an automatic lockup, transmission lockup switch like this. And to do that you've got to intercept into the little computer and get the solenoid valve and the transmission to open or close, and I can't remember which one, it, which one it is that locks up the torque converter. Now once you've locked up the torque converter, you get a lot more efficiency on your exhaust brake. So you just flip that switch and you slow down a lot quicker. And it also sounds quite uh, neat with the noise that 
resonates out of the intake manifold, a bit like a set of jake brakes. Now something to be aware of on these transmissions is that the torque converter lockup does not work on all gears. It does not work on low or first, but it does. The plumbing in it doesn't allow it to work in the valve body, but it does work in second, drive and overdrive. But from experience, if you're four-wheel driving and going down a steep hill and you're in low ratio and you kick it down to low here, even though it doesn't lock up here on the torque converter, it still works quite effective because as soon as you turn on the exhaust brake, the revs drop down to 850 RPM and they do not go any higher than that. And that actually gives you a massive amount of uh, hill descent control when you're in low and for low up on the lever here. So anyway, we'll do a video on how to do this sometime. It could be a month away um, if I get time. So there you go. All right, see you later.